Hi and welcome to a new Volo. In this video I'm going to show you the method I use for assembling surface mount components and PCBs. So right here I have the dark load PCBs which I mentioned in a previous video and there will be a small card showing up in the upper right side of the screen with a link to that video. These PCBs were uh, manufactured and uh, sponsored by PCBcart.com they also offered me a steel stencil to be used with the assembly of these PCBs. I'm going to use uh, this uh, leaded solder paste and uh, I strongly advise you to use leaded solder paste with your prototypes because it's just easier to get right the whole soldering process by using uh, leaded solder and also it is easier to rework in case you have some problems like solder bridges. So basically the tools that we'll be needing are the stencil and uh, this metal tool just to help spread the paste over the steel stencil. Just to help me in the process I am going to use uh, a set of uh, four PCBs from another project. These are from a digital power supply that I designed a while ago and uh, they are exactly the same thickness as the PCB that I'm going to assemble that is 1.6 millimeter. And um, I'm going to position these on the outside of the PCB, something like this. And the steel stencil will go on top. And I can use some uh, tape to keep the stencil in place on these uh, mounting PCBs. Right, so now I can align the stencil and use a piece of tape to keep it in place. With this uh, gold plated PCB is really really easy to get the alignment right because the color of the actual pads really shines through this stencil. I just changed the camera angle here so we get uh, less reflections on the stainless steel stencil. Now I'm going to apply some of this uh, solder paste on the stencil I think that will be enough. So now you want to go from left to right in a single uh, movement with constant pressure and constant speed to get a good result at a 45 degrees angle. Now one important part that uh, usually uh, people get wrong is the actual separation between the stencil and the PCB because on a stencil printing machine the stencil will lift uh, perfectly vertical on all axes from the uh, surface of the PCB but when you're at home you tend to move the stencil around and especially on the fine pitch uh, pads you will uh, mess up the space the paste deposition. So be careful and just try to separate the stencil in one single movement. As we can see we got almost perfect uh, paste deposition. Just a slight offset on the uh, horizontal on these um, QFP um, pads and uh, where uh, we have a, a bit of an error right here on these uh, capacitors pads but this can be easily reworked later so now I'm going to do another PCB with the exact same method and we got even better results on this second try now let's move on to placing the components one thing I forgot to mention is to always clean your stencils before storing them because if that paste dries on the stencil especially in the small fine pitch pads you won't be able to clean it off easily later. Now for the actual assembly, I will use a pair of tweezers. I have here a bomb for this particular project and I tend to start with the smallest components because the, the logic behind the, the, that choice is if you were to place the bigger components first, 
you would uh, have a high risk of uh, bumping them around when trying to place the small components afterwards. So I'm going to start by placing these uh, 10k resistors. And by looking at the uh, bomb, I can see I have them on uh, R4, R8, R11 and so on. You don't have to worry much about aligning them at this point because they will kind of self-align during the reflow stage. I'm going to continue assembling these two boards until I have them fully populated and uh, that should happen quite quickly due to the magic of uh, video editing. So this is how the boards look like uh, when all the components are placed. Um, I have two of them and uh, I only had one Bluetooth module so one of the boards which is a spare of course will not uh, get the Bluetooth module for now and the next step is to pop these boards into the reflow oven run it to uh, run it through a reflow profile and I'm gonna get back to you once uh, that's done. So the two boards are out of the reflow oven and have cooled uh, and a couple of bad things happened during this uh, reflow. First of all, I didn't know this uh, solder paste leaves such a nasty residue like you can see around uh, every component the flux residue from the paste is just uh, too much and uh, I'm going to try to clean the boards off. And the second thing that happened is uh, this input electrolytic capacitor which is a surface mount one I believe it's a Fujicon branded capacitor just exploded in the in the reflow oven and I don't know I'm not sure I don't know why this happened but as you can see it leaked all of all of its gunk all over the PCB and I'm going to have to clean that and replace it now this capacitor was new, it came from this uh, tape, it was sealed, so I am I usually keep the parts in these plastic bins, so there isn't much humidity that can go in and uh, be absorbed inside the, the parts, so I'm not sure what caused this capacitor to explode in, in the reflow oven. It was definitely meant to be reflowed but in this case it just exploded and spilled uh, his gunk all over the, the PCB. So I'm going to have to go in there, clean all the mess and replace with this uh, last one from the tape. And this is how the board looks after replacing the blown cap and soldering in the through hole components. Now all I have to do is spend probably 4 or 5 hours uh, setting up the development environment for the STM32 microcontroller because I'm quite sure it's going to be a pain in the ass to get that up and running just for a simple Hello World LED blinking program. But anyway, I'm going to post an update on this project once I have something uh, working. So, as always, please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe and follow me on Twitter. See you next time.